is taking a walk and look at the sky, how ominous it is. It's been raining and storming like all day long. We decided maybe we could take a walk, but we're kind of getting caught in the rain now. Right, Nadia? Yeah. Yeah. So we're walking back now. I think it's going to downpour soon. I can hear it. So I thought I'd show you also the results of our first garden. Um, Considering we had terrible soil and not a lot of daylight, like a lot of like over here gets um, covered by the trees come like four o'clock, five o'clock, they just don't get a lot of light. But, um, and also any of the plants that I bought that were already grown, um, didn't seem to grow very well. Everything that I planted by seed seemed to grow better, most of it, but um, I'll start over here. So these are tomatoes that I grew by seed, and I think these are like beef steak or something, and they're okay. Um, they're just turning green now, and it's the middle of August or the end of August, so not great. Um, and then I did transplant a couple to the other side of the garden, and they didn't do so well. Um, but these are the cherry tomatoes, and they're doing okay. Like, there's some in there that are red, and we've already picked some. But again, I am by no means a master gardener, and yeah, it's not doing wonderfully, but it's so weedy, like so many weeds in this garden. But we have plans for next year. We're just going to buy our own soil and do it that way next year. And this seems to fall on the garden. I don't know what happened. But this is, these are the jalapeno peppers, and I did pick a lot. My husband grabbed a lot of them, but there's some in there. I don't know if you can see them, um, but he did pick a bunch. And then this is a little pepper plant and these are supposed to be like orange and yellow but they haven't gone they haven't changed color yet and that's supposed to be cauliflower not so great <laughs> um and oh yeah well this pepper plant is growing some a few of them and they're supposed to be orange there's another one in there that one does not look so good and this one has flowers on it so it might grow something this has little peppers yeah, and they're, oh, they're so cute. Oh, they are very, very cute. Mini mixed bell peppers, I think, maybe. Um, and then here's some onions over here. Those will, those look like they're doing pretty good. We got green beans in there. You can see we got some growing. We've picked quite a few of them. If anything, we'll just save the seeds and grow them in a greenhouse next year. And then we did have snow peas, but they got eaten by the little animals. And for fun, I grew broccoli, and that's the result of it. Not really impressed, but the plants are cool, and I'm imagining you can eat the leaves. It does, but it's I don't a mini pumpkin patch, and there is a big guy in there, and another one growing there, and then there's another one that's still green in there, and I'm sure there's some more in here. Once they start growing, they grow pretty big, and we got a ton of cucumbers, which we pickled, and um, ooh, I see one right We pickled them and they're really good. That, that's pretty fun. And my zinnias, they just are growing like crazy. I think I'd be better off growing flowers because they're so pretty. You just keep picking them. And then there's sunflowers, which aren't, they're doing good, but they should have opened up like a month ago and they're still not. And they're very tall. They're like taller than me. But there's a couple that finally opened up, but they're not the sunflowers that I really like. I like the kinds with the big black center. And then I got this little lonely eggplant down here, but there is a big old eggplant there growing, and then there's another one back there growing. I don't know if you, it's hard to see, but he's back there. So I'll get a couple of eggplants, maybe. And these are the tomatoes that got transplanted. That's doing okay, but I don't think they'll turn. I see little, I do see little um, tomatoes growing, but they don't look great. They're like Roma tomatoes. And that one didn't do well at all. We got one big tomato and then it just died. We got lettuce and the lettuce goes Hey like guys! Crazy. Welcome to episode 19 of the Knits Fire podcast. I'm back! Um, I am Kamiko, your host, and I will be talking to you for the next little bit. Today is Tuesday, August 21st, 2018, and it is rainy and cloudy and that's okay. Um... It's actually, it seems like the sun is trying to poke its way through, but um, I apologize for my lighting and for my 
terrible background. These curtains are really ugly and they are not staying, but that's what I have for now. So just bear with me. Um, also, if you hear any interruptions or any background noise, um, that is my daughter. <laughs> She's four. It's hard to keep her occupied and I really would prefer recording during the day because better lighting. Um, I really don't have a great setup story of my life. Um, and right here and right now is when I can podcast. I'm feeling very organized. I have everything here. I have show notes written up today. So yay. Um, welcome to, like I said, episode 19 of the Knits Fire podcast. If you are a new viewer, then welcome and thank you so much for um, choosing to spend a little bit of time with me. It is so much fun, um, I think. And yeah, welcome. And if you are a returning viewer, then thank you so much for putting up with me and waiting. You can find me Instagram, uh, Kimiko MC Knitspired, Ravelry Miko Biko, and also there is a Knitspired <laughs> group. Pod, Knitspire podcast Ravelry group so you can join in there and I just always post the episode up there I don't post show notes just because I don't feel like I really have anything interesting to add um, but if you have any questions definitely feel free to message me and ask me you can message me on Instagram where I am most active um, you can send a message on Ravelry too I do check every once in a while but sometimes I don't go there um, but I will it's super exciting to open up Ravelry and see a message so definitely wh whatever, however way you feel comfortable. Um, I actually have a question. So on Ravelry, my username is Miko Biko, and it used to be Kamiko, which is my first name. And then I just changed it like a while ago, a couple years ago, I think. And you can only change your name so many times on Ravelry. And I'm terrible at coming up with names. Um, I'm actually like kind of shocked that I even came up with the name Knitspired, but I don't even like that <laughs> that much. Um, some people have really awesome names for their podcast groups, for their podcasts, for their usernames, whatever. But, um, yeah, I, I, so anyway, I was thinking, I was wondering if I should change my, um, it, Ravel oh, my Ravelry name to Knitspired or Kamiko Knitspired or Knit, or something along those lines so that it's all cohesive and so if I talk to somebody on Ravelry they and then I talk to them on Instagram they know who I am because I do make a lot of comments with other um, knitters and yarn lovers and fiber people throughout the community so to have that um, continuity I don't know should I should I do that I don't know I'm not sure I'm not sure what to do but um so I did like surprise surprise I'm here within another week or maybe a little over a week um but I did post oh maybe it's been two weeks um but I did post a podcast a couple weeks ago or whatever it was um and here I am again however that podcast the sit down part of it was recorded back in the beginning of June and here we are at the end of August so I actually haven't sit down and done a sat down and done a podcast so it's a, I'm a little rusty and there has been a lot happening in the meantime um so if I double up on stuff, forgive me. If I miss stuff, forgive me. <laughs> I am really going to try to get one out every two weeks. One Every week is a little too much because I don't knit that fast. I don't have that much to share. But maybe every two weeks, just to kind of catch up and stay on track. I, I can do that. <laughs> Why not, right? Um, I actually wrote show notes this time, um, kind of to keep myself organized and I didn't want to forget anything. Um, I do have a lot of show notes, so hopefully um, I, I, it doesn't go too long. It looks like I, I have a lot to talk about, but um, I don't want to make a really long podcast. And yeah, so um, a lot, like I said, a lot to catch up on. Um, my birthday was a month ago. I'm, I don't even think I ever talk about my birthday because I don't really do anything with it. Um, it was uneventful. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a month ago. I kind of based my summer around when my birthday is. And we're almost at the end of August, guys. This is crazy. So many people are um, rushing into fall already. Do, do people really like fall? Like, does nobody like summer? I love summer. I'm a summer girl. I love it. I love it. I love the heat. I'm a little spoiled. I have air conditioning. I've had air conditioning for a few years now. So wherever we go there is air conditioning, so I guess I'm a little spoiled that way. But I do love the heat. Um, it's easier to do stuff. Um, 
I don't know. The humidity, not so much. If you can tell, my hair is curly, so I've been wearing it actually natural for the it's like since May, April or May. I think the end of April. I've been wearing it natural just because I wore it straight for probably I don't know hundred years. And I'm like, let's give this hair a little break. Plus, I'm trying to grow it out, and I don't want to do so much heat damage to it. And um, this is it under control. <laughs> but if I go outside, it's like, so it's a little crazy right now. But anyway, anyway, stop rushing summer away, guys. Fall will be here, and winter will be here, and just enjoy summer, guys. And that's just actually saying, talking about summer reminds me of Olaf from... Um, Frozen, where he talks about summer, um, what it's like to be in summer, and it's kind of sadly ironic because he's a snowman and he doesn't realize that he will melt in the summer heat. Anyway, that's not even where I was going. That's going to make the podcast even longer. Sorry. Um, we have been, so I say we're busy, but like we don't do a lot of like fun, interesting, exciting things, but we are constantly on the road. And that is because we live um, like an hour and a half from where my husband's business is. We have had to do a lot of driving back and forth, which means a lot of car time. And he always drives, yay, um, which means I get to knit. I've gotten a lot of car knitting done. However, I don't feel like I've gotten a lot of progress done on stuff. Maybe it's just because I do a lot of socks. Um, but yeah, lots of car knitting time. I will show you some of my finished objects from the last few months I guess so the first thing I will show you oh I was so organized and now I don't feel organized at all where could socks possibly have gone okay that was the one thing that I didn't bring with me was my socks so this is a test knit that I did for rye flower knits back in June I think maybe the end of June and they're called the trip socks and the yarn is from Knit Picks. I like that yarn. Thank you. <laughs> and I think it's called Blueberry Speckle. Um, it's actually kind of hard to see the design on these socks. It's really cool. It's got cables and eyelets. Love this pattern. It was so much fun to do this test knit for her. She is an amazing, um, there you go, you can probably see that. She is an amazing designer. She has some really beautiful stuff um, and I did this test knit for her the cables and the eyelets and it's just like super playful and the cool thing about it is it's very um there's a lot of a lot going on in it but it keeps you really um entertained I get kind of bored and it was very entertaining and I don't memorize my patterns I'm not confident enough to do that just because I do not want to make a mistake and rip back especially with like lace and stuff um so i i keep like i keep an eye on the pattern and but it was easy to like look at it and be like oh yeah okay i know what i'm gonna do next and so it was fun doing that um doing this test knit for her and i love the way they came out um i did say that they'd probably be look nicer in like a solid or maybe a tonal but she really liked um liked it in the speckle and i do like the speckle um yeah, so that is the Trip Socks by Rye Flower Knits, and I don't know, I think it's part of a collection, but I'm not really sure. You can check her out, but um, that was really cool. And actually, this just reminded me, somebody asked me about my sock blockers, and they're just um, the Di Diamond brand, and I think they're in medium. And I just got them at a local yarn store, and this is, I, there's two of them in the package. It's too far right there. Um, yeah, so they're nothing like, oops, <laughs> yeah, that's why. They're like not crazy special, but they're great for modeling socks on. And yeah, so those are my, um, uh, that's one pair of finished socks. And I did want to actually share another pair, which I've showed with you, shared with you before, but if you are new to the podcast, um, this is my one sock that is actually out for purchase, and it's a sock pattern called uh, Firmament Socks. And... I'm just going to show them to you again. They've been out for a while, um, but I haven't really promoted them too much. And they kind of reminded me of that, so um, I grabbed them together with the trip socks. And um, I figured I might as well show them again. So these are um, using Regia 4-ply, I think. Um, and it was on the Lolly colorway. So it's like a white with some blue and green and 
like a yellow green speckle. Um, also, again, hard to see because the pattern for these is on the back. Um, it, it's a, the pattern is going up the back of the sock, so you can see that. But um, yeah, it's just like a little. Um, I don't even know what to call it, that kind of pattern. And they are the Firmament socks. And I just did a regular traditional um, heel flap. Um, the heel flap and the gusset kind of turn. But I've been recently doing the Fish Lips Kiss heel because after so many people talking about it and I finally was like, I might as well learn something new. Ugh, that's what I like to do is the Fish Lips Kiss Heel and they fit me wonderfully. Um, I love it. It's so easy. I really, I love making socks and I hate doing the heel flap and gusset. I hate it. I hate picking up stitches. I, I've gotten better at it because I've been doing so many socks in the last couple of years, but I really feel like I suck at it or I just hate it. And it's just so much knitting just to get your socks back down to the original stitch count. Um, so I really like the Fish Lips Kiss Heel. I say definitely go purchase it. Um, I think it's only a dollar in Canada. It's like a dollar thirty-four. You know, you gotta love the exchange rate, but whatever. Um, also, so I did talk about the tour de sock challenge, or I guess you would call it that I've been doing, or that I participated in. Um, I did. De I definitely will be honest, and I lost steam with that because I decided I wasn't feeling very competitive. And I have so many other things I want to work on, but basically the thing is, I think for $10, you get six or seven patterns, sock patterns, and they're, they're, um, they're not difficult, but they're not a uh, beginner. So they, they're kind of, it keeps it kind of exciting. So I did the first one, which is called plan a, and I didn't do the second half of that sock, which is weird because I never get that thing that people call sockitis. Um, I usually I always do both socks at the same time. So this one, I haven't done the second one yet, which is weird, but um, I will. Um, maybe because I don't love the color, but it'll look cool. And it is not blocked, but this is called Plan A. You cannot see it because the lighting sucks. Sorry. Ah, okay, that might work a little bit better. You can kind of see the pattern and it goes just to the, like it goes all the way around until you get to this, the foot, of course. But it has this cool, I think it's called the Latvian Twisted Cast On. And I think when it's blocked out, it'll look really cool, but it's a neat little cast on. Um, really fun, easy to do, super easy to do. Um, but it's a, it is a really nice pattern. Again, it was one that you could memorize. Um, although, I, like I say, I don't memorize it in my head. I just, I do have to keep referring back to it, but I can just like look down at the pattern and then know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And the cool thing with this one is the heel on it let me take it off and show you is when you do the the decreases on the um the gut on the the heel you do it let's see if you can see that um this way so it has this cool little pattern on the bottom of the heel it's just a neat little detail um i thought that was kind of cool so that is one of that and i don't have the second one yet because i have not cast it on yet but i will um and the second the second was as far as I got the second sock in that and it's called those are called the I want to say Odinzion socks I I should have looked up the pronunciation I think I did before but I couldn't find a pronunciation but I think that's how it's pronounced I don't really know what it means <laughs> but they are a really again a really cool looking pattern um fun to fun to make because it keeps you interested and I get very bored so this is that sock let's see if I can so it's got this detail on the side and I don't know if you can see that detail let me put it on my arm and show you that might work better again I am so sorry for my terrible lighting this is the detail going down the front of the sock it's like this little these little cables they're like little circle cables that's what you call it I'm not really sure and then your traditional heel flap um, with a welt across the toes right there I don't know if you can really see it it's a very busy yarn and kind of a rounded toe I'm not sure I it does make me want to do my toes a little differently now I've, I've been doing it I've been decreasing my toes 
um, in this way now. Same with, I believe these were the same way. Yeah, you end up with less, um, that's a little pointy, because <laughs> they haven't been blocked, of course. I don't block my socks ever. I should, but I don't. Anyway, it ends up with um, less stitches on the needles to Kitchener graft together at the end. So yeah, these are the Odenzion socks, and then there's the next ones were the bicycle race, and then there's another one out that I I basically downloaded these to keep myself um, with socks to interesting socks to knit um, uh, when I want to. So eh, I'm not really into the competition, but it's fun to have. I mean, for ten dollars, you get like what six or seven or eight Money, patterns. Money. I think the um, the price. You can't really beat it for some really nice patterns. Um, and I don't know, I think, I assume they're for sale because I did see them on Ravelry. Um, I saw one, I think the the Plan A socks. I saw them on Ravelry and I think they're probably a paid for pattern, but I'm not really sure. I cannot confirm nor deny. Um, and I don't even know what the next pattern is out, but I'll be checking that pretty soon. On my Instagram, you might have seen lately that I posted a little baby bonnet. It's like a fluffy, it's a it's a white or like a cream color. And I had a friend commission me to make that because she's doing infant photography and she wanted a little bonnet to put on little babies for props. And um, it's funny because I've been kind of wanting to do that for a while is um, making, um, knitting up props for um, photographers. And for her to ask me to do that, I was like, oh, of course I'll do that. That's so cool. So she loved it. And I said, uh, just give me some feedback on it. And um, unfortunately she doesn't have any any sessions booked right now because she's just starting out but she will be um, getting me some pictures soon which would be really cool um, and I actually have another photographer friend who wants some a bonnet also she thought that would be really cool so I mean you can't resist like a little bonnet on a little baby and it's so cute can't stand it so that was fun to make that took no time at all um, you, I mean usually I'm working on socks two socks on like I don't know what size needles, tiny needles, tiny, tiny yarn. So to knit up something in like a, like a, a size, US size five needle, it's great. It's easy. Um, sorry, I keep looking out the window because I keep seeing things happening, but there's a main road right there. So I, you know, I just see something out of the corner of my eye. Anyway, I'm just nosy. If I don't sh um, share the the um the yarn that I'm using or the colorway um I try to keep the the tags on them on my yarn when I when I buy it and then when I store it away and for the last two let me see the blue socks that I showed you in my last podcast that need to be test knit and then for these the um the Odin's yarn socks I do not know what happened to my um my ball bands, I, the tags. I don't know what happened, so I don't even know what yarn it is. I searched and searched, and I don't throw that stuff away, especially for a yarn like this. Let me just say, it is a beautiful yarn. It is soft, it is squishy. <laughs> I don't know what yarn it is. I looked up and down for it. I could not find it. I'm so sorry. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know why I can't find it, but I can't. I'm sorry. Let me have to see. I think those are my only finished objects as of recently. Um, so I do, I, I did show you, like, I think I started it probably like a year and a half ago, a blanket for my little girl, Nadia, and um, she's sitting right there. <laughs> and she, it, it, I was using just some Patton's Croy sock yarn in like a rainbowy color. And I had started by making it a granny square blanket as in starting it as a, a tiny square and then making it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger not a bunch of separate granny squares and I was kind of losing steam on it and I didn't really like the way it looked um I like granny square it has its place but I just didn't really like the way it looked and I was like I don't think I want that in a blanket so I left it for a little while and I ripped it apart and Nadia helped me roll it back into a ball it's so much easier to take it apart than it is to put it together it's so much less time. I don't know. So I actually took it, um, after I took it apart, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do the granny stripe blanket. I'm just going to jump on that wagon and do what everybody else is doing. And I did it like for a couple of rows and I just couldn't, I can't, I was like, no, it's not doing anything for me besides annoying me. So I took that apart again and that was fine, whatever. 
So then I decided, it is in the bottom of this bag with a bunch of other projects that I'm not even gonna talk about right now. I decided about two weeks ago that I was gonna do the, the hexagons. Because the cool thing about doing cro crocheting hexagons, and again, I don't love crochet. I definitely like knitting better. I love the process of knitting better. I like the way it looks better. Um, but hexagons are cool because you get to restart over and over and over again. And me, who gets bored very easily, that's great. So um, it is, I think it's called the Sweet Stripes Color Way in Patton's Croy Sock Yarn. And this kind of looks, we this ball looks kind of weird because it's been rewound, like un unwound and then rewound back up. So that is the yarn. I have quite a few of these, um, not really showing well. That's a little bit better. It's more rainbowy and pretty than what, it, what it's coming up as. But anyway, that's the idea. You've probably seen it before anyway. But I have like all these little hexagons crocheted and they're so cute. I love it. I think it's gonna look so cute together. Please don't hit the tripod. I think they're gonna look so cute all sewn up together. And it's gonna be a nice thick blanket without like lots of holes in it. Um, you know how the granny stripe has holes? Granny stripes or granny squares, they have holes. This isn't gonna have the holes like that. So I think this will be really cool. So far I have three, four, five, six hexagons. They. Um, crochet up so fast so and they're so easy and you can easily put it you can easily f um, start and finish one like pretty quick and then not pick it up again for a while and I'm using with that I'm using a um, you see this I like this it's the boy and it's a size 3.125 millimeter in or size D hook and I think I just got that at like um, Michael's or something, but it's very comfortable to use. And it's a smaller, smaller size, pretty small, so it's a tighter gauge. But um, yeah, I like these. And if you remember um, my Stephen West Speckle and Pop shawl that I started making with when it was an MCAL last year, or the Mystery Knit Along last year. I'm almost done with that shawl, but when I picked it up again back in the winter, I don't know when exactly in the winter, um, I, if you remember, the needles came apart and there were about 5,000 stitches just hanging out there. <laughs> and it was a heart attack moment. I couldn't believe I had these nice, um, I think it was like Nova Platina needles, beautiful, wonderful, awesome, comfortable needles. And they broke. Like I did not expect that. And I, at first I thought they were um, interchangeables and they weren't. So I was like, oh no. So I contacted the company I kind of whined to a knitting group and the company and the knitting group said bring it back to your yarn store and they will replace it so I finally went back to the place that I bought them at, which is not near me anymore so it was hard to get over there and as soon as I showed them to her she's like oh okay <laughs> she got a new um, a replacement set for me the only thing was I had to put the new needle I had to um, put the stitches which I had rescued all the stitches I had to um, thread them onto the new needles and that oh my goodness it was near the end of the day she was about to close I felt so bad and I was sitting there I was standing there sweating trying to get the needles on right in front of her there was nobody else in the store her husband and daughter were there and I was like oh man I, I don't know how many stitches were are on that like seriously I think there's about 5,000 stitches <laughs> and not really but that is done taken care of and I can start that again I'm a little scared too because I don't know where I left off although I always keep really good notes on my stuff so eventually I will get around to that because I do I want to I want to wear that it's so cool plus I dyed all the yarn for that so um we'll see we'll get we'll get to that soon so I, I also worked on the um the comfort fade cardi I didn't do the knit along or anything I just bought the bought the pattern from Andrea Mallory and um I didn't I did I dyed the yarn to that I am not any good at doing fades. You're shaking it, huh? Yeah, I'm playing with in the I know, like you're playing water. with like, Oh, okay. It's like a tower. Um, I, do, I don't like fades. I've, I've decided I'm not into the fade thing. Um, but I thought the pattern was really cool. However, I did, did like dye the different, the three or four different colorways in all these crazy colors. Not crazy, just um, 
they don't really match. So I, I'm hesitant to finish it, and I know I have to finish it, and I could always just over dye the entire thing, but it's sitting there. The Comfort Fade Cardi, I'll get to that eventually. The Road to Rhinebe Rhinebeck um, MCAL, and I did start out with that nice and strong and everything, and then I lost steam on that one too. And then I knew I had made mistakes in it, so I ended up taking it apart. And of course, um, I'm mid-row. But I did start it again recently um, while I was waiting for something else to start. I don't know what. Took the whole Road to Rhinebeck shawl apart, completely apart, and then I started it over again. I wanted to start fresh. And I'm sorry I'm, I'm mid-row, but here it is. Um, I love the textures and all the different parts of it and it's all squishy because it's mid-row like but you kind of get the idea you can kind of see the textures and you've probably seen it anyway uh, there we go really cool um it's not as contrasty as it should be but I kind of like that the colors kind of just are muted which isn't really my go-to it's not my it's not what I normally do muted colors but I do like this and um I'm, I think I'm almost done with it. She she did a really good job with this pattern. It's so textured and it just, oh, it's so pretty. I really am happy with it. Um, I'm late to the shawl party. I'm late to every party. <laughs> and But I'm enjoying this and I'm looking forward to finishing it. And these needles that I'm using are, nit, are from Knit Picks and it's the Try Me. I think it's the Try It set. And I really like them. They're the nickel plated ones. Um, I'm not a fan of wood. The nickel ones slide off the 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 stitches slide off so easily, um, especially in the humid in the humidity. I really like these, and these are let me see, these are four point five millimeter four point five millimeter US size seven. I really like these. Um, I have nothing bad to say about these needles. So that is another reinstated um, project that I will be finishing soon. Hopefully, it'll be done by the next podcast. Maybe that could be something that I I work or work toward as one of my goals because I feel like I don't ever have finished objects or like anything really cool to show um, and that's that is on a DK weight but it's um I don't even remember what yarn it was um, so it to me DK feels like worsted weight it's really it just feels really thick to me um, I don't know but that's that so, and I think that is what all I need to talk about as far as my prod my stuff goes, I did want to share this. Uh, this was a months ago, and I don't think I ever shared this, but I made this little pin cushion holder or a pin cushion. I, I embroidered all that, and it's not the best, but it was fun to do. I do enjoy embroidering, and then it's just like a plain, not a plain fabric, but just a solid fabric on the back that is not embroidered. But yeah, I thought that was like a fun little pin cushion. Because when I lived in the States, I had this really cool little heart shaped pin cushion. Um, it looked quilted, but it wasn't. It was just the fabric. And I had bought it years and years and years ago because I did a lot of quilting. And I didn't bring it with me, um, but I made this recently because I do need pins every once in a while. I have also been dabbling in macrame <laughs> lately, like um, wall hangings and plant plant hangers and stuff so that's been kind of fun I am always like trying wanting to do a different craft I don't know I just love being busy um, also embroidery I've done that and I kind of want to do some little embroidered pictures um, of retro campers I don't know they just I love the way they look I've been looking at those online lately so I will be doing that soon too I just haven't gotten I've been too busy knitting oh I did want to talk about this thing okay so I have um, wound up some yarn lately. <laughs> I have a Swift and a ball winder. I have one of those Amish Swifts and my ball winder is this, this kind. A lot of people have this and the yarn, I have such a hard time. The, with the ball winder, I mean with the Swift, the yarn gets kind of tangled around it and I try to put the, the hank around it so that it's like the yarn that I'm going to be pulling is on the outside and it's not like getting tangly and stopping. And while that's happening, then this is, this is winding up and yarn gets tangled under here. And it, thankfully it wasn't like a really expensive yarn, but it, it, it was a good yarn that I was a nice yarn that I was using it the other night. Plus I was just trying to get a ball wound and it was really frustrating because I had to cut some of the yarn off and it really, it really messed with me. Um, I don't want to get a new ball winder. Um, 
because I don't want to spend the money. I think they're expensive. But I feel like they're all like this. So I don't know if anybody has any um, thoughts on this or if you have any s secrets on how to make it actually work. But I have the hardest time winding balls of yarn. And, and I feel like the, the solution isn't just to get a new Swift and a ball winder because those things are expensive and I don't really want to replace them. So am I just being impatient? I don't know what. I, I don't know. I don't know if I am. <laughs> Um, and I haven't been buying any yarn lately, and I won't be buying any yarn, um, just because, one, I don't have a lot of room for it. Two, I have a lot that I already have to use, and I don't like to have a lot of stuff and just waiting there. There's a fly. <laughs> um, and it's expensive. And if I don't have, like, a project that I really want to use it for, I don't really want to buy it. Um, but my last purchase of yarn, <laughs> that said, I did buy yarn lately, recently, um, and because I was buying something for somebody else, I might as well buy some yarn. I haven't bought any in a while. Um, and this is the Manos del Uruguay Alegria, and in the cabaret color, and I love it. It's black and white and pink, and I love black and white and pink, and I can't wait to see what this looks like. I think I'll probably use this for one of my um, sock patterns that I'm coming up with for my little collection. Um, so, so pretty. I love it and it's squishy and delicious. Um, yeah, I think it's a 75% merino, superwash merino and polyamide, 25% polyamide. And I love that, I love this yarn because it's, um, it's handwritten inside. There's love in this skein of yarn. <laughs> I would love, don't get me wrong, I would love to buy all the yarn and buy more yarn, but it's just, I can't. <laughs> it's hard for me. Um, and I think that is, oh, and I also got some new Chiago needles. Oh, are these the needles? I think they are. They, I ended up going down a size, and I'm not sure what size these are. They are U.S. Hey, hey. US 1.5, 2.5 millimeter. <laughs> so um, I did go down because I have some US 2.5, I think. And I wanted to go down a needle size to see um, where my gauge was because I think that's changed lately. I don't know. Um, and I haven't talked about podcasts in a while, so I just wanted to throw this in there. Um, I really caught up on, I, I binge watched a wool, um, Woolen Homestead, um, and that is a husband and wife team, and they are in Michigan, Michigan, yeah, so uh, they are really great. They have some talent. She's an awesome knitter, an awesome podcaster, and her husband does the, the dyeing now, um, so definitely watch them, Woolen Homestead. They're so cute. Um, I love them. And I recently, after hearing about her from so many other podcasters, I finally, finally, finally started watching Katie from Inside Number 23. And she is awesome. I have um, binge watched her episodes. I'm still about a year behind on her stuff, but man, she is good. She, I like her and she's so, she has such a great energy about her. So I love watching her podcast and no wonder she's doing so well with it because she's just an awesome person. So, um, yeah, go check her out also, although you probably already have. Like I said, I'm late to the party on everything. And then just shows I've been watching recently. I used to watch, like years ago, I used to watch that show Weeds. And I decided to rewatch it because it's been so long. And I binge watched the entire series recently and I finished it. And um, I cried at the end. I cry at, well, I cry at everything. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was such a great show. <laughs> um, so there's that. Uh, I think I talked about The Ranch last time too. And then ever since the last podcast, they did do one more season and awesome as always. Very funny show. And I recently, um, the new Orange is the New Black came out. So I'm, no. I'm just finishing that up. I only have a couple episodes left. So that has been a favorite of mine for a couple years now. And another one, I restarted watching and I think I'm just rewatching everything because it's summer and nothing is new um, American Horror Story um, 
And now that, like, it's still scary, but I've already seen all of them, so it's like, okay, I know, what, I kind of know what happens, I kind of remember what happens. But then again, I also don't remember what happens, so it's nice to rewatch them. Um, so, yeah, that's still in the first season of that one, almost done with that. Uh, it's fun. <laughs> and then a show that I think everybody watches, it's, it's one that's currently on, is This Is Us. And... That show, God, talk about always crying. You can cry in every episode on that show, man. Um, it kind of reminds me of Parenthood. Like, it kind of takes, like, in that show Parenthood, I don't know if you ever watched that. Um, that show always made you cry. It was so emotional and so family-driven. And then This Is Us is kind of like that. Although it's not the same show. It's not even close. It's not even similar. In a way, it is. Anyway, if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. So those that's what I... That's what I've been watching. Apparently my four-year-old is 14 and she's acting like a teenager slamming the door. And then I just wanted to share a couple of books I have recently been reading and looking at or buying or whatever. So To Kill a Mockingbird, never read it and it's a classic. So I'm reading it now. Um, I love it. It's such a good book and I want to see the movie. Um, I can't believe I never read it, but yeah, such a great book. Um, kind of having a hard time getting through it only because my heart is with knitting and I just want to be knitting and I can't, I've told you this before, I'm not magical. I can't knit and read like some people do and I prefer to read over an audiobook. Um, so it's kind of taken me a, a while to, to get through this book but I am totally enjoying it. Read it, To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, I also bought, it was funny, I was at the store and I wanted to get a, a book, a knitting book but because I used to have a bunch of them and I had to get rid of them when I left the States. Um, and I knew that I wanted a book that had knitting stitches in it. And so I went to um, to the bookstore. If you're in Canada, it's called Chapters. I don't know if it's in the States. I don't think it is. But Chapters is big here. Um, and it's great. It's just like Barnes & Noble, if that's even around anymore. Um, and I'm looking in the knitting section. I have this book in my hand. Looking through it, and I'm like, I want this book. And you know how if you look at the Canadian price, it's always like $50 more expensive. Not really. It's only like $4 more expensive than in the U.S. price, which I hate. But So I'm standing there with the book in my hand, looking at the book, saying, I want this book. I'm happy to put the money down and purchase this book. It will be a great addition to my collection. And I take my phone out and I look on Amazon. And for $2 cheaper, I can get this book on Amazon Prime. And I'm standing there and I was about to put this book away and I'm like, why would I wait a few more days to get this book for t to save $2 when I can just get it now? So I just bought it. I bought it at Chapters and I'm so happy with it. I actually took it and um, first thing I do when I get a new book, I don't know if you do this, smell it. Yeah, I don't know if that's weird. <laughs> Love this book. I definitely recommend it. You can see I already have... Um, little tabs and stuff. I actually have a lot of notes on what I want to use some of the stitches for, for patterns, but this book is awesome. Definitely recommend it. 750 Knitting Stitches. The Ultimate Knit Stitch Bible. You can get it on Amazon Prime or at the bookstore. Um, also, um, a cookbook that I got, which I don't like to have a lot of cookbooks because most of my recipes I find online. Um, I just don't, like I said, I don't like to have stuff around, even though I have stuff around. <laughs> um, this book is so cool. They have quite a few, they have a few of them. I think they have like three or four of them, but I got, I went for this one and it's Thug Kitchen. Um, and if you're offended by language, this is not for you, <laughs> but I like language. <laughs> um, it is called The Thug Kitchen 101, Comfort Food. One pot meals and other easy plant-based dishes to pack your plate. Um, and they actually have a Thug Kitchen book that has um, bigger, like um, more involved recipes, but this one is like quicker recipes. And this is what I mean by language. You, you know, I don't know if that's going to be backwards. Right now it looks backwards, but I don't think it will be when you see it. Anyway, um, great book. Again. <laughs> smelled it when I bought it when I got it. I got I did get this one on Amazon Prime because I had been watching it for a while and it was really it was like ten dollars off or something so I was like why not it's got some awesome stuff in it again I have bookmarks um oh wait that's one of my recipes I wrote down and used it as a bookmark I love the um 
like the pictures it's like kind of like on the road type of thing and I'm not showing you I'm not even you're not even seeing any recipes but like the recipes are cool there's like some really great stuff in here and they have information on what they're talking about like if you don't even know what nutritional yeast is or panko or um, tofu or Bragg's or if you don't know where to get the stuff they give you all the information um, this is one of my favorites is the tahini sauce um, I use that on um, broccoli and asparagus and pretty much anything green and it's a delicious sauce and super easy to make and um, yeah I have lots of plans for this book there's really awesome recipes so I got that um, happy with that book and then my sister-in-law or my future sister-in-law gave me this book because she and her my brother-in-law are also vegan and none of us are stoners but it is called the vegan stoner cookbook it was just for fun and she wasn't really impressed with it so she's like yeah take a look at it um so i bought it i mean i i i grabbed it from her and it's it's cute it's it gives you more than anything it gives you ideas um on stuff and it's just kind of kind of a silly take on different recipes for vegans for plant-based people again we're not stoners <laughs> but it's fun it it kind of the recipes are for like Ooh. not paying attention i guess like uh, mix in a handful mix in a little bit of this and a little bit of that and um yeah they got some cool ideas in there so that's what i've been reading those are my books as of late um and then i am almost done but i thought it would be kind of fun to sh like I said before uh, a couple episodes back I don't really talk about my life or or too much about myself I guess and I thought it'd be kind of fun for you to get to know me so I wanted to stick this in at the end and tell you five things about myself that you probably don't know about me it's not necessarily very interesting but it's me um, and I don't know you should do it for yourself and it's kind of even just writing stuff down about yourself it's kind of interesting um, one thing number one I am a writer. <laughs> um, I have written four books, like novel length books. Um, they tend to be on the melodramatic side. They're not like interesting, like sci-fi or historical. They're not romance. They're not anything like great. It's like chick lit kind of, um, kind of more mm -hmm. melodramatic, more melodramatic than chick lit or if anything. But yeah, I've written four books. I've never published anything. Um, I want to I've tried a little bit um, but maybe I'm thinking there's a reason that I don't want to publish and I don't want to put them out there and right now is just not the right time I do plan on getting something published eventually um, but yeah I've written four books and I I have to be honest I think I might have lost a couple of them along the way because it's I've moved so much and um, even if I have lost the books, the ideas and the characters are still um, alive in my heart. They're in my head. So um, I like to write a book a year. <laughs> it might sound weird, but there is a challenge that I take part in every November. And it's basically write a book in a month. And I do like to do that. Last year, I did not do that. Um, but I will do that again this year because I always have ideas and I just enjoy writing. Number two. When I lived in the States, um, I went to school for massage therapy. And I worked, if you're from um, like the Boston or like Rhode Island area, you probably know about the TF Green Airport. I worked there. Uh, people call it the Providence Airport. Basically, it's kind of in Providence. But anyway, I worked there as a massage therapist for somebody who owned a little um, chair massage booth. And I would give massages to people who were flying, which was really cool. It was a really cool job. I really, really liked that job. It was really fun. And I had a lot of repeat customers, um, people who are business flyers. Um, yeah. Anyway, one day I was massaging a girl. I didn't recognize her until I saw her credit card. <laughs> and it turns out she was Demi Moore and Bruce Willis's daughter. One of their daughters. I think, I'm not sure which one. I'm not going to say her name, but it was one of them. <laughs> um, number three, I have a doppelganger. <laughs> um, actually, I don't think so much anymore, but um, I guess if you know me and you know my um, different facial expressions or s just different turns of the, the head or whatever, um, a lo I used to hear it a lot more because my hair used to be red and straight. <laughs> if you ever watched Grey's Anatomy or Private Practice, the 
um, character Addison, Kate Walsh. That is my doppelganger. I used to hear it all the time. Do you know who you look like? Hey, you look like that girl from Grey's Anatomy or, or um, Private Practice. I used to hear that all the time. Even my daughter used to say that. Um, fun fact. <laughs> Seriously, not very interesting. Just, <laughs> I don't know. Um, number four. Mm, I always, you know, people always talk about their first job. And when I talk about my first job, I talk about my job at a pizza shop. Um, if you, I lived in Massachusetts and it was Papa Gino's. If you've ever been there, you probably know Papa Gino's. Loved that job. Um, that was my first job. That's what I always say. It's not really my first job. My first job was at Honeydew Donuts and it lasted for all of about maybe a week. <laughs> it was awful. Um, I didn't like the job at all. I didn't feel very comfortable. I wasn't even 16 yet. I think I might have had to get a work permit to work there, but they hired me at a new location. They had these awful, awful uniforms. It was like this crispy khaki color skirt that was mid-calf and they wouldn't even let me hem it. Like they wouldn't let, I asked my mom if she could hem it and they said, no, you have to wear it. Um, like the, the owners, they said, you have to wear it as long as it is. And this gross, like Pepto Bismol pink shirt, like, like a polo shirt. Ugh, it was awful. And I think I, I, I hated my uniform so much. And that's why I couldn't stay at the job. <laughs> Not that the Papa Gino's uniform was much better. It was either a red or a green polo shirt with black pants and, I really had no sense of style and I know I looked awful so but it was a much better job and much better people but the donut shop yeah that was actually my first job yeah okay fact number five about me that you probably don't know but you might um, I talk about my daughter my little girl Nadia she's four um, but I actually have four daughters because <laughs> um, I do talk about my daughter my daughter my daughter and sometimes you're probably thinking well a four-year-old probably wouldn't say that or probably wouldn't do that or hasn't been around long enough for you to know this or whatever I have four daughters um, I am not going to get into it too much but they are um, beautiful <laughs> they are my oldest is almost 19 um, my second is almost 15 and my third is 12 and a half and then I have Nadia and she's four and almost four and a half um, and my first two their birthdays are both in October very close to each other like within a week apart and my second two their birthdays are right next to each other and they're both in April so I do I have four four wonderful beautiful wonderful daughters and at another point I will talk about them but um, I just realized I haven't talked about them much at all but um, maybe I'll talk about my oldest next time because um, kind of cool <laughs> kind of cool stuff that um, is interesting in my life so those are my five random facts this week yeah not really interesting not anything great um, but it's me like I said it's just something for you to know about me um, again my I feel like I'm very disconnected and disorganized and all over the place but some people seem to like that I don't know um, I don't know people people are coming back so I'm just having fun here I don't know I'm not expecting anything like crazy out of this podcast thing I'm just having fun and I think that's what it's all about and like I said before I've gotten to meet so many cool people in the knitting community and um, people that I never would have met before so that is that is what it's all about and I really 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 appreciate you watching coming back and spending all this time with me and listening to me ramble on and on and on about just just so thank you again so much and I will be back again soon because I once I start sitting here and talking I really enjoy it and um it might sound narcissistic I guess because I'm talking about myself but I don't mean to be narcissistic about it um I just really enjoy talking to you um and getting feedback from other people so have a great week and I will see you soon bye